Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to quickly set the stage for uh, this page that you're on about designing assessments. So to begin there's three types of assessments and this is covered in uh, one of the handouts that have been posted on the page. Uh, but we have diagnostic assessments, formative assessments, and summative assessments. This video in this page, this part of the unit, is going to focus more on summative assessments. And then the next page where we talk about activities, that's really more of the formative assessments. Uh, so this presentation is going to focus on summative. Uh, but quickly I'm going to just talk about which, uh, what all three of these are. So diagnostic assessments would be like pre-tests. So you haven't done any teaching yet, the students are fresh to this unit or this topic, and you want to figure out what they already know. Formative assessments are what they sound like. You do these along the way as they're forming their knowledge and they're forming the connections to the material. So you want to see where they're at. Uh, and those formative assessments should prepare them for summative assessments. These are your final exams, your major papers, or your just, uh, you know, your intermittent exams, maybe after big units of the course where you've covered, um, you know, a lot of material. Some people do it, you know, quarterly, three times a semester, whatever it might be. For summative assessments per unit, you're looking at aligning this pretty tightly to your outcomes that we talked about last week. So, in the next couple of slides, uh, we're going to talk a little more about uh, summative assessments, like I said. Uh, it could be any of these things. So high stakes exams, that would be like, you know, the, the quarterly exams, uh, final examination at the end of the semester, term papers, you know, the multi-page research papers, um, if you're doing something with like a literary review, any large paper. Um, semester long projects, maybe they're working alone, maybe they're working in groups, it's more than just a paper and it's something they maybe do in the community or it's something that they're implementing to present to the class. Um, and then also something like a portfolio, especially at the graduate level, uh, that's a collection of all their work. Uh, these are all summative assessments. These are really tightly aligned, like I said, to the outcomes for a unit or to the objectives for a course. So here's our first example. Uh, and again, we're working at the unit level for this example. Uh, so students will analyze and interpret statistical data as they support decision-making processes throughout an organization. So what kind of assessment could we use to figure out whether students are really able to accomplish the outcome that we've set here? So as an example I have, uh, they'll be provided with a set of sample data from some organization, which I'm calling Organization X, uh, as well as a list of decisions that need to be made by the organization. So we're going to sort of simulate uh, what they might do out in the real world here. Uh, so based on the data they've been given and the decisions that this organization needs to make or that are coming up to be made, uh, they have to provide recommendations as to what the decisions should be or what aspect of the decision their specialty contributes to. So this is pretty, I, I try to keep this very general. So if it was marketing, maybe it was the marketing aspect of a decision, or if they're in engineering, maybe it was more the technical aspect. So, you know, this is, we I tried to keep the examples sort of broad. Um, so they have to provide really an educated opinion based on the data they've been provided with uh, as to which way the decision should go. So you're connecting really tightly to the outcome with your unit assessment. So think about as you work on the assignment for this week, the unit design guide, uh, the first thing you're going to do is design an assessment uh, to assess the outcome or outcomes that you wrote last week. So this is the type of connections you're looking for. And an assessment for a unit can assess all three outcomes or, you know, or three or four, however many you have. Um, but sometimes you may have more than one assessment. Maybe you have three outcomes, one assessment, three outcomes, two assessments. It's just important that you assess them on every outcome so that anything you're saying you're going to teach them is backed up with you measuring whether or not they're getting there. So another example, uh, you will be able to identify and summarize the important features of major periods in the history of Western music. So the assessment that could go with this would be providing students with a series of music clips from different time periods in Western music. And they're tasked with writing a report, several pages, on how they identified which period each clip is from. They have to summarize the significant and unique aspects of each period that they were able to identify by listening to it and based on the studies that they've done throughout the rest of the course or throughout the rest of the unit. And then they have to explain the impact past periods 
have had on future periods or uh, periods that came after it in Western music. So again, we're really just working with the words we've already got in the outcome itself, saying they have to identify and summarize. We're going to follow through on that in the assessment here, uh, making them identify which periods th uh, that the music clips came from, explaining how they identified it, summarizing the important pieces that make that, that period unique, and then trying to connect the periods that have come before to the periods that came later. So again, trying to keep it really tight. When you're designing your assessments, you're really just kind of expanding on your outcome and saying, you're going to show me you know how to do this or you know this by doing this. All right, and then in my last example here, you will be able to prepare and present effective, informative, and persuasive public speeches. So for this assessment, uh, learners can select a current political, societal, or legal issue to prepare a presentation on. They have to choose a stance on the issue and collect any materials, testimonials, and data required to support their stance. Each learner makes a 20-minute presentation explaining the issue they chose, stating their stance, and presenting the evidence they have gathered to support their stance. So this one is a little more simple and applies to a lot of different disciplines where you're just unpacking that outcome. Pick a stance on something because this needs to be persuasive. Uh, it's going to be a presentation and not a paper because that's part of the outcome as well. Uh, it needs to be informative, which is why you need to have testimonials, materials, and data to go with this presentation to, edu to show that you have an educated opinion and an educated stance. And then that gets presented in front of the class, who may or may not be persuaded, but uh, as the instructor, you are the one determining whether or not they did an effective job of potentially persuading someone. Uh, so that's, again, unpacking that outcome uh, is how you're going to get to the most effective assessment. So now that we've looked at these examples, I want you to go back to the page and check out some of the articles and handouts and resources I've posted there. I'm also going to post these slides as a PDF if you want to save them for reference, but the video will stay up here as well.